You know, I really wanted to do a real quick uh, further explanation of what it means to walk after the flesh and the condemnation of the flesh and what it means to walk after the spirit. And I could give you about 50 scriptures at this point, but it's always good to look up for yourself, even what you hear anybody say, me also, so you know that what I'm saying is true. So if you look up all the scriptures on walking after the flesh and walking after the spirit, you'll be able to comprehend a little more without me taking the time to read the actual scriptures. Um, I want to just put forth a principle of truth that may help you understand the battle and the nature of the battle. And I want to uh, explain it like a father with children because, you know, it came to me last night. There's probably no greater way to explain it. And when we walk after the flesh, we're going to feel condemned. And there's not a whole lot of people that talk about it. There's some. And in most new versions of the Bible, the last 20 years, that scripture and that part of that scripture in Romans 8 is canceled altogether. So what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve? <laughs> Satan changed the word. So yet, you know when Satan's really at play, when you see a lot of scriptures being changed and eliminated in the Bible, and that's one of them. Now, therefore, there's no condemnation. It's almost like telling your kids, you don't ever have to feel bad about what you do again. You can grow up in this house and you can live here for 21 years and you never have to feel bad about anything you do that's wrong or shady and that you know you shouldn't be doing. Don't ever feel bad about that, you know. How does that make any sense? It doesn't make sense. And so um, some people and some situations, just like a father with a child, require more chastening. And, and you know, that, that's up for grabs too, because does God chasten us <clears throat> or do our own ways chasten us? There's a lot of scriptures about that too. Maybe it's God chasing it, us because of the way he created us, so our ways do chasten us. So when we walk after the flesh, it says it equals death, right? It doesn't always equal death right now, right here. Some people it does on occasion. You hear about the kid that's pretty good, has a good conscience, good kid in school, takes drugs once and he's dead. Or the girl that, you know, drunk, went out drinking for the first time in her life, Christian tried to walk in the light, was a good kid in the family. First time she went out drunking, she got alcohol poisoning and died. So once we once we walk after the flesh, we are always playing bingo in a sense, or Russian roulette. We don't know the cost. We can't determine the cost of walking after the flesh. Like sometimes I've gotten an ear infection, a sinus infection. One time I dropped a computer on my toe and broke it. You know, there's... <laughs> Is it God that did it to me or is it my own ways punishing me? A man is held captive by the cords of his own sin. I've learned a lot through my little aches and pains and sufferings, however, about the very nature of walking after the flesh and the spirit. And I'm thankful because God does chasten us and maybe it's our own ways are chastening us both. So I want to, again, talk about the actual condemnation of walking after the flesh and how it's very dangerous to ignore it and pretend like it's not there because then you don't <clears throat> you don't learn anything from it at all. It's like my <clears throat> my husband told a story one time about his son and he and he's in Hawaii and he's telling his son not to wear not to go outside without his thongs on his they call them slippers in Hawaii. <clears throat> They're little lightweight shoes that just have a thong in them. And he's constantly telling his five-year-old son, don't come out here outside without your shoes on because there's a construction thing going on and there's nails in the ground. Well, finally one day, sure enough, his son comes in screaming in the house. <laughs> he's got a nail in his foot. I don't think it was too bad, but, you know, his dad sat down and talked to him for a minute before he took the nail out to show him what happens when you don't heed the father's voice? So I don't care who you are, where you are. God is talking to us all the time. 
our own conscience, our God-given conscience is talking to us. Don't do this. Don't do that. Go here. Go there. Like I heard a criminal investigator did a, a series of uh, maybe TV shows on crimes committed against women that lived through those crimes. All those women had a little voice inside saying, don't go here, don't do that, turn here, go there, don't go out with this guy. I mean, every single one of them, it wasn't even a Christian program, neither was it the guy a Christian. Did they understand how to discern God's voice? No, but I know what they were talking about. So back to the condemnation, one of the highest forms of discipline and being disciplined. Go out and make disciples disciplined ones. I want to talk about this, the discipline of the Spirit. The discipline of God is for us to actually acknowledge when we feel bad about what we think and say and do and get some revelation from God, not just throw it right behind us because then we don't learn anything from it and then it's all happening over again. The best thing we can do, like at times I've overeaten, even when I was young, um, it's probably the thing that I've done the most that I've grieved myself in. And that's, what is the definition of, of sin? To know what to do that's right and to not do it. That is the breach in the spirit. So I don't think it's easy to fall away from the Lord. I think you have to grieve and deny and resist the Holy Ghost a lot to get a hard heart. I don't think that happens suddenly or quickly, the falling away. But I do think not only is there a great falling away going on in this country, because again, everybody really deep inside just wants God to save them and fix them and do everything for them. They don't want to actually have to be responsible for making judgments about whether they're actually walking after the spirit of the flesh, like all day long, the spiritual man judges all things, spiritual woman. You know, all God's ways are judgment. It's a joy to the just to do judgment. Um, the robbery of the wicked slays them because they refuse to do judgment. Even that scripture alone, you know, if you have a house that has a lot of valuable things in it and you know there's a robber, what are you going to do? You're going to take a lot of precautions to not get robbed, right? You're going to turn the other way like the proverb says. You're going to avoid it, pass by it run from it. You're going to acknowledge that there is a real issue here and not go that way. And exactly that's what a father would do with a child. If you would just look at walking after the spirit, like a father and a child, a mother and a child, you know, everything a flesh walking child does in a family affects the family. When one of the kids doesn't want to take the trash out, when they don't want to clean their room, when they don't want to participate, when they have bad attitudes, when they're um, self-indulgent, you know, when they eat all of the pizza and there's none left for anybody else. Everybody's always being affected by us following the flesh, even us. There always is. If it says death, when you walk after the flesh, it always leads to some kind of death. It's turning down the volume. It's turning down the spiritual well-being in our own soul. And the way to recover that is actually to get wisdom and understanding and knowledge, not to pretend like what you didn't say to somebody that you felt bad about didn't happen. Don't throw that behind you. Ask the Lord, pray, Lord, I don't have a right spirit. I don't have a free spirit. I think there's something wrong with my love for you, my love for somebody else. Open my eyes. I want to see dimensionally the prince, the power, the ruler, the seduction that's getting me to do this behavior. Why am I doing this? Please help me to understand this. You know, Psalm 66, 18, if you hold the love of sin in your heart, God won't hear you when you pray. Acknowledge the fact that you're loving something you shouldn't. Pick up your Bible and read about that. Want to hear from your father. It's like a kid that's doing something wrong, right? I mean, my brother taught me how to seal when I was five or six. I think I was six. I, I got a doll, put it under my pillow, and I felt like I put Satan himself under my pillow, and my whole bedroom was on fire. I finally acknowledged my crime maybe three days or later to my mom. I don't really remember quite what happened, but a child wants relief from their conscience, 
from a father. We're also made like that. The father wants to give us relief and release from the burden of sin. It's why Jesus came. That's why it says in 1 John chapter 1, walk in the light as he's in the light. What you handle, taste, and touch of the word of God, fellowship that. Walk in the light while he's in the while you, and you'll have fellowship. And the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because we all should be handling, tasting, and touching the words of life that we're getting to battle our flesh walk. And that's why a, a lot of people are dead while they live calling themselves Christians. They're dead, dead, dead. Because they don't get any kind of revel revelation. They don't get wisdom. They don't get understanding when they grieve themselves. And they just want, once saved, always saved. Just want to be in the family. Just want to do whatever I want with no repercussions and go to heaven. I want to be totally irresponsible and play. And I, and I want to believe that I don't affect anybody walking around dead. You know, there's a lot of scriptures about being spiritually dead. And I think the more we grieve, deny, and resist the Holy Ghost and don't get understanding, the harder our heart gets to where people get to the place where Jesus talks about in Matthew 24. Many shall be offended. They betray one another. They look down on one another. And the love of many waxes cold. Because if I'm not taking care of my own health physically, my own health spiritually, it's going to affect other people. And when I, and then the worst thing that happens, when you blow off taking responsibility for your flesh walk, you start becoming jealous, envious, an accuser, a slanderer. Blaming other people, blaming God for the stuff that you don't want to touch yourself. It's all downhill from there when you don't own your own flesh and and blood, uh, flesh, you know, walking after the flesh and walking after the spirit battle. Because it's the only battle that we're in. It's the battle we'll be in till the day we die. Hopefully we're all getting better. And what's really, really exciting for me personally now is I have a lot more women that even understand what that is and they're actually playing the right football game. They're into Romans 8. They're, they're fighting the good fight. They're not perfect. They get revelation, though they don't toss it all behind them anymore. So there, it becomes that continual feast. Speak the truth in love. Member each other. You know, that's what's really cool. Two are better than one in Ecclesiastes. They have a reward for their labor. How can one go to war alone? How can they stay warm alone? A threefold cord isn't easily broken. That's very, very cool. Because I've known some women for 35, 38 years. But in the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, those women have been getting converted into the spirit-led life where they stop blaming God and people to actually own their own good spirit and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus except us walking after the flesh. And then we're playing Russian roulette because what if you do get in a car crash? You know, there's no guarantees what walking after the flesh is gonna cost you. Some people have eaten their last burger and fries and have a heart attack. I mean, we don't know. We don't know why play around with it. And again, we should want more and more like a child in a family to please our father who does know. He knows what's good. He knows what's right. He knows what's holy. He knows what's in our best interest. So the more we can hear his voice and follow it and walk after the spirit, the more we got going for us, right? With the father. And, and you know, I'm going to end it with this. Prayer of Solomon. Lord, help me to go in and out of the hearts of other people in a right spirit. You want God to show himself strong on your behalf? Care about that one thing. Don't go into people's life as a pretentious, hidden, deceitful, the bread of, the bread of hypocrisy. Don't choke people down with that because you're doing yourself a lot of harm when you do that. You are in the operation of getting sick, weak, and going to sleep. And people can go to sleep. That's what the great falling away is. And I hope this helps you understand a little better the very nature of walking after the spirit and walking after the condemnation of the flesh. Amen.